Lorelei passed forward to me, and before I tell you what it was that Lorelei put on here, I don't know about you, but I would not want to follow that beautiful baby either. <laughs> and I've got notes. <laughs> it was a beautiful song. It was a beautiful song, and you were a beautiful, beautiful presentator. And what Lorelei said, she is all of us. Every one of us was overcome with emotion at beholding the light of the world. And so this is a good place to just do that. And your heart and your spirit was absolutely present in grace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We got a video? All right, let's hear a video. Now what? We celebrate freedom. As a nation, we got freedom put into our hands. We earned it. We, we, we grabbed it, and we made it our own. And now what do we do with it? Anybody ever feel like that? Oh, I've got freedom. I come to a unity church, and I've got freedom. I've got these principles that I get to work with. Now what? Now what do I do with them? As an analogy today, I want to use a, a bit of a, a, a metaphor. My grand, my, uh, not my grandson, my son, Adam, came to me when he was five years old, and he said, Dad... I want to build the most magnificent treehouse that's ever been built. I want it to be the envy of all the other kids in the neighborhood, and I want to build it myself. And I said, well, you're going to have to earn the money. You're going to have to earn the money to do that. You're going to have to do a lot of chores. And he began the work. He took out the trash. He did all the dusting. He, he, he took care of the vacuum as best he could with the vacuum. I, I decided not to give him the lawnmower. He was only five years old, and I said, you can earn all the money you need to build the most magnificent treehouse. In fact, you're going to earn all the money you need to have the tools that you need. And sure enough, he worked for months and months and months, and we got all the supplies needed, all the lumber, all the nails, all of the power tools, and put it into the hands of a five-year-old and said, okay, Adam, go build your treehouse. What do you think might have happened had we done it that way? Somebody is going to lose an arm. Or somebody is going to lose a finger. But the reality is we as a nation have been given the tools of freedom. But there is a requirement for that freedom. There's a heck of a lot that is required of us as citizens of this country that we have celebrated our freedom and our independence this week. There's a heck of a lot of responsibility when it comes to sitting in a unity church. You've come here and you get tools placed into your hand. We place a hammer into your hand and say, now, go build a life. But we have to talk about the requirements of building that life. Because a hammer in your hand without a lot of things can be a very dangerous thing, let alone a power saw or a drill. Today, I want to talk about the requirements and the responsibilities of that which we have just celebrated. What are some of the tools that we have gotten as a nation? Call them out to you. What are the freedoms that you get to enjoy? Think of the Constitution. Freedom of speech. Anybody ever see the freedom of speech misused? It's a power tool that can be very dangerous. The freedom of speech, yes, you can speak your mind and then look out because without some of the stuff I'm going to talk about today, this becomes a weapon. What else? What do you learn here when you come to Unity North for the first time? Freedom of religion, a, God, a, a country given freedom to think the way we want to think. And here in Unity North, we even take it a step farther. You can have the religion of your choice, the religion of your heart, the spiritual path of your understanding, the God of your understanding. It's a wonderful tool. And misused, it becomes a weapon. So the freedom of choice, the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, the freedom of thought. You can think the way that you want to think. How blessed are we to have that tool placed in our hands as five-year-old spiritual seekers. You can create your own reality. You can make a, a treehouse of your own design that can live and, and be heaven on earth. And you can have a club in that treehouse. And you can invite all your friends. A freedom of feeling. A freedom of the emotions that you get to share. A freedom of the being creative. As an American citizen, the opportunity for me to be creative, let me tell you, that's a freedom a lot of places don't have. Just walk lockstep the way we told you you're supposed to think, the way you're supposed to create, and don't create anything because we'll, we're, we're going to control that. We've got reins on you. 
And what I love about being in a unity church is we are told, go make the life that your soul wants to live. Go create the life that your soul wants to have. Be creative in how you get there. And again, a hammer in a five-year-old's hands can be a dangerous thing. The spiritual ability to create whatever you want can be a very, very powerful tool and very dangerous. We have a freedom of a thousand things, but we have no idea sometimes what to do with the saws, the power saws. And one thing I know, first and foremost, the power saw, there's an electrical cord at the end of this. You got to plug in. If you are plugged into your human ego, the human ego is going to use this saw for destruction. If you are plugged into a power and a presence that is holy, sacred, beautiful, and true, then it becomes the most wonderful tool to cut the boards into a greater treehouse of your very existence. What are you plugging into? My first question. Where are you plugged into? And to ask ourselves the question. And last week I, I, I said a few things from this platform. And I got responses of people who were plugged into spirit, who saw the intent. And I saw people who were plugged into ego who wanted to fight me what I had to say. And missed the whole message that we belong to each other. It's a reality. Where are you plugged into? Receive my words today from being plugged into a power of oneness. To a power of spirit. A power of God. So these tools that we are given here on Sunday morning are vitally, vitally important and they require us first to be conscious of where we are plugging into. Where is the source? Where are we gathering our information? Where are we gathering our ability to, to traverse the waters of this unique environment where somebody over here thinks different than somebody over there? Where somebody over here believes differently than somebody that believes over here. Is it possible at the microcosm of this small community that we can prove what is absolutely necessary at the, le the level of the nation, the macrocosm? And is it possible that if we can prove it here in this small environment, and we have yet to prove it, by the way, we have a long ways to go, that at the macrocosm of the entire human race, that something is possible? You see, in the nation and in the unity movement, we have at our fingertips more freedom than anywhere else in the world. And that means more responsibility. As a nation, we are fr as free as any other nation on the planet. And I celebrate that this week. But I don't want to just celebrate it for Fourth of July, Independence Day. I want to celebrate it all the way through the year until I come back again and remember that these freedoms come with a great deal of responsibility to be conscious, to be aware. And then I come every Sunday, and I'm here in a spiritual community where I'm handed a power tool, spiritual principles to manifest the, the dream house, the dream tree house of my life. But I don't want to just do it here on Sunday mornings because that's a very dangerous thing. Here's your tool. Now go to sleep and go out there. It becomes a very dangerous tool. So what does freedom require of us? Well, I'm, go ahead and call it out. What does freedom require of you? Responsibility. What else? Accountability. Work. work. Oh, man, I got to work at this. I just want a gift given to me. I don't want to work at it. What else? Courage. Devotion and courage. Tolerance. 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 Under evolution. Evo I got to evolve too, Harry? Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> this is getting hard. You know what? Freedom is not an easy thing. Woo, fireworks go off, I'm free, I'm free, and then I go back into my unconscious state, and I'm not paying attention, and I've got a power tool in the, in the hand of a five-year-old. Look out. I'm going to give you a list of five things that I think absolutely are necessary to use the tools of the freedom of choice, speech, religion, thought, feeling, and creation, and a thousand things more. Number one, freedom requires education. I put that saw into the hand of a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 50-year-old with no education on how to use it, your hand looks like this or your arm goes away. Freedom of thought gives us the opportunity, the blessed opportunity and privilege to inform ourselves. Yet so many people think, okay, you've given me a tool on Sunday morning and you've told me I can create the life that I want. And then we go out into the world unconsciously not implementing with any degree of education. And I'm telling you, if you come to get your spiritual education once a week or once a month on Sunday morning in this place on Sunday for 25 minutes, you're going to be lost. You're going to be in big trouble. 
a requirement of the freedom of spiritual ideas and principles is in the classes that we teach, where you can, can integrate them into the fabric of your being, not once a week on Sunday morning. I can't do it. All I get to do is introduce you to a tool, pull it out of the case and say, remember that you have this? Remember you can manifest a life? Now go get educated how to use that drill so you don't hurt anybody or hurt yourself. And let me tell you, this in, my, in the hand of an uneducated person means that probably the freedom that I'm enjoying of having the power tool is going to be gone very, very quickly. And who is responsible? I am responsible. Spiritual principle. I have to take responsibility for the tool that is in my hand. Opinion without education is a very dangerous thing. How many people have heard and seen political opinion espoused without an education and been hurt by that or seen somebody hurt by it? Plain and simple. Let's just call it like it is. Opinion of a spiritual nature without education has damaged the world and divided us religiously like nothing can. And that's not just in the country, not just in the nation, in the state. It's in this community. If my lack of knowledge is informing my opinion about who you are, what you believe, and how good or bad what you believe is, I'm in big trouble and I'm about to lose the freedom that I get to enjoy because I've misused the tool that has been placed in my hand. Unity empowers people, and so does this nation. Freedom is our ability to choose and create the life that we want. But if you come here on Sunday morning only, I'm saying, don't bother. If that's the source of your spiritual education, we're both in big, big trouble. Get into a class and have a relationship with the drill, and then be the master craftsman of the life, and not just willy-nilly walking all over people with your opinion about the life that you want. You see, spiritual laws are being used whether you're awake or not. Do you know that? The spiritual laws that we teach from this platform are being used whether you are aware that you're using them or not. And unconscious law, uh, laws used unconsciously are very dangerous. And education will keep you conscious, plain and simple. You see, the spiritual path is not a hobby. And I want you to hear that plain and simple. If coming on Sunday morning is a social activity and a hobby for you, great, we appreciate your, your donations, we appreciate your heart, we appreciate your smile, but I'm saying you're not getting the depth of what is possible here. You're getting a tool in your hand. Get involved in a class and educate yourself because education equals knowledge. Knowledge equals power, and power equals sustained freedom. I want you to hear that again. Education equals knowledge. Knowledge then equals power. And that combination, that means that my freedom will last long, long, long here in this church after I'm gone. That that freedom will be an eternal thing that I can pass on to somebody else, to my grandchildren, to my five-year-old who built the most magnificent treehouse. Number two, and this is one that's going to feel a little bit difficult for us. It doesn't make any sense. It seems like a dichotomy. Freedom requires sacrifice. Certainly, we celebrate in Veterans Day, Memorial Day, the sacrifice that, made, that had to be made for us to get to this point in our existence. But where you sit today as an American citizen and where you sit as a member of this community, it requires sacrifice. The word sacrifice, the etymology of the word means to make sacred. That means to have a conscious awareness of the sacredness of the power that's been placed in our hands. So what is it you have to sacrifice to maintain freedom? Call it out. What do you have to sacrifice to maintain the freedom here and now? What's that? Selfishness. Discipline. You have to sacrifice, sacrifice discipline? Or you have to be disciplined to have it. Ego. Sacrifice human ego. Anything else? Comfort. There's the answer I was looking for. Bing. Give, that, give them a lollipop. Freedom requires a sacrifice of comfort. That doesn't make any sense. We're the most comfortable nation on the planet. Yep. And because we're so damn comfortable, we have a weapon in our hand that we are misusing. I'm saying we've got to sacrifice comfort in this nation and in this church. How many people have ever had somebody tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and why to do it? There's a comfort in that. I can count on it. Life is dependable. I got somebody just dictating every one of my, my moves and my actions and my thoughts. Yep. And that is a place of imprisonment. But boy, it's a place of comfort. I can count that every day my wife's going to tell me what pair of pants to put on 
or what shirt to wear. Don't, don't tell Susie I said that. I don't know why that again came out of my mouth. If she, if she dressed me, I wouldn't be wearing jeans and this shirt on Sunday morning. I'd be wearing a three-piece suit. It is slavery to have somebody tell you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, and why to do it. Yet most of us are just absolutely longing for that. Somebody make the road easy for me. And to get out of that, we have to get okay with the, the uncomfortable zone of making our own decisions. If that's a new experience, that's going to be uncomfortable. St. Peter knew this. Peter wrote in the second chapter, 2 Peter chapter 2, people are slaves to whatever masters them. <clears throat> people are slaves to whatever masters them. And we are so concerned with how the master is out here, is out here, is out here, that we're not managing the master that's on the inside, which is the human ego. There's an ego, there's a mechanism that you have been trained, that you have learned, that somebody has put into your brain and that you took on as your own, that is the master of your life and you're making decisions without thinking. You're engaging the mouth without thinking. Freedom of speech without a thought behind it first. And all of a sudden I say something I don't think about and now I've lost a friend because he thinks differently than me and I didn't engage my mouth. It is very uncomfortable to stop to pause and to say, I want to understand before I open my mouth. I want to put my ears on. That's a comfort zone that we are learning here at Unity North. And it happens spiritually as well as in the nation. The ego will look for what it needs to control. Have you noticed that? What it needs to control. I'm saying get out of control. You want the, the, the world to become what it can be, your life to become what it be, the, the tree house to become what it can be, get out of control and be okay with the out of control. Inner freedom must be a partner to external freedom or you end up back in the, in the prison. And a lot of us are walking this free country in a prison of our ego. Right, wrong, done, end of dialogue. Right, wrong, end of dialogue. Let's put, go back into the prison and let's see the damage that's been done, the people in our wake because I'm right. And you die a lonely life alone because you've offended everybody. Somewhere between right and wrong is a field, Rumi said, I want to meet you there. It is the place of oneness. It is the place of goodness. It is the place that's uncomfortable if I don't understand. But we teach in this church, say, help me understand. Tell me more. As opposed to right, wrong, end of discussion. You don't belong here. Everybody in this room has a different opinion and they all belong here. Because if we can't find oneness in here, everything we're doing is a sham. What else do you got to sacrifice? Anybody got to sacrifice a story? How many, who's got a story? Come on, let's get honest with each other. How many have ever had a story that you sacrificed on the altar of evolution, on the altar of growing? We all have those, and we can celebrate those stories. There's always another story, layer upon layer upon layer of story. And if you keep living in the story of your imprisonment, of your victimhood, of where somebody did you wrong, you are renting out necessary space in your mind that can be used for a higher ideal. If you are renting out space to how you were victimized, your souvenir of hell that you're carrying around, you are taking up precious space in, in your mind and you're renting it out to something that you cannot change. Amen. <laughs> Wayne Dyer said, we need to give up the hope of ever having a better past. Quit living there because you're putting yourself, you are the maker of your own prison, not the external reality. You are the maker of the internal reality of the prison that you're li living in. And so you need to give up the, the story. Albert Camus said that freedom is nothing else but the chance to be better, to have a better story, to have a better life. That's what we do in unity. We are giving you spiritual tools so that your life can be better, that your relationships can be better. That your experience as an American citizen can be better. That your experience in your family, your job, or wherever you happen to be can be better. And that means giving up the old so that something new can come in. Which is what Jesus was all about. He came, he was a radical and he was a rebel and he turned things upside down. Not just carts in the sanctuary, but carts in consciousness. He turned over carts and said, stop telling the same story. Sacrifice it on the altar of evolution and become somebody new. 
That's what we do here. Let's not misuse those tools. Third thing I want to say is sacrifice. Edu uh, education, freedom requires education. It requires sacrifice. Number three, it requires uncertainty. How many people are okay with not knowing? Yeah, oh, I'm not too sure. I don't know. <laughs> uncertainty is a byproduct of freedom. So that being okay with the mystery is required. There are so many people that want to come to this church and have me stand up here and tell you, here's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now regurgitate it to me. That doesn't work. That's a prison. That's me telling you how to live. That's me telling you how to think. But then we come here and we think, we assume the role and the responsibility politically, spiritually, and everything else. We sit at a table downstairs and we say, this is the right way, your way is the wrong way. We've got to sacrifice that. It requires being okay with the mystery. I don't understand you at all. I don't understand your opinion at all. But I know that underneath all of these opinions that we are one. And I'm going to sit in the mystery of that. Rather than attack, rather than defend, I'm going to be present to the miracle that can happen when we can sit in the energy of love together. That will make a stronger nation. It will make a stronger church. And it will put the tools to use that are being plugged into something greater than our need to be right plugged into something greater than our need to be the winner. Go ahead and clap for that. That's okay. <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi said this, freedom is not worth having if it does not connote the freedom to err. Uncertainty means you're going to fail. You are going to screw up. I could give you my list of my screw-ups this past week but it would be too long. And the reality is, how blessed are we that we can have the spiritual concept of oops in our vocabulary. Oops, I messed up. I'm not put to death. I make amends. That's why forgiveness is so vitally important in Jesus' message and in the message of unity. Oops, I screwed up. I'm not being shot. Oops, I messed up. I get to say I'm sorry. Can we do this over? Can we do this again? Oops, and forgiveness will make a better nation. It will make a better freedom. It will make a better treehouse. It will make a better life. It means a healthier relationship with the screw-ups, with the failures, and the tools. Oops, I plugged into the wrong thing a minute ago. Let me unplug from that for a second. Let me own it. Let me take responsibility. And let me plug it in somewhere else, which is number four. Freedom requires wisdom and responsibility. The freedom of the spiritual tools, if you don't take responsible for implementing them, you are actually taking a step towards being a deeper victim. I can control my life, but I've got all these people in my way. I get to create the most magnificent life I ever, ever, ever wanted to see and to experience and to be, but if these people would just get out of my way, you are absolutely implementing the spiritual law and principle and it's being misused and you're going to lose your freedom not because the spiritual law disappears or God exists from your that it moves from your life but because you have shut yourself down put yourself back in a prison of victimhood and said I don't have the tool anymore those who misuse a tool will lose the tool plain and simple Now I'm not gonna get too political here but let me tell you there might be some conservatives that like this opinion it is not, it is, is the misuse of the tool that is the problem more than the tool. I want us to sit together and to be together in a place of oneness and say put the tools down for a minute and let's try to understand each other because our misunderstanding has caused the misuse of a tool. I, I got too political there. A hammer is not a negative thing. A hammer is not a negative or a positive thing. It's just a hammer. So freedom requires a great deal of responsibility. I misuse this hammer. That hammer gets taken out of my hands, plain and simple. I misuse this hammer, and I no longer have the hammer. I misuse my freedom. That freedom goes away. But the thing about a hammer that I love, that I love, so many of us think hammers just for whacking nails. And what I love, is there's a great big oops in this hammer. There's a whole other side, a whole half of the equation on the other side. 
I just built the, the worst treehouse ever. It's not going to stand if I send my five-year-old up there. Great. Let's start again. This is the teachings of Jesus. Let me pull up the boards. Let me pull up the nails. Let me do it differently. And we're going to do this together. Where we are as a nation and where we are as a church, guess what? We screwed up a lot. Our history is dotted with horrible, heinous acts. Does that diminish the freedom? No, it means the greater responsibility to pull up the boards and say, let's do this again. Let's do it better. I take responsibility for the hammer that's in my hands. And I don't put that responsibility on anybody else. How am I showing up on in my life today? Fifth one, freedom requires sharing. You know, realize how many times we talk about co-creation in this church? Let's put the next slide up there. Freedom requires sharing. We talk about co-creation. We give lip service to co-creation. Yet when it comes to our disagreements, we have a difficult time sitting at the table together. I want freedom for this nation and for this church long after I'm gone. And that means we've got to sit at the table and try to understand each other. Try to prove the principles of oneness that we espouse every single Sunday. Try to espouse the principles of compassion and understanding and love and generosity and oneness. If we can't do it here, we can't do it anywhere. What do you do? You're, you're building your treehouse. You're building your life. Your treehouse in your backyard. And you realize, I don't have a tool. I don't have a tool that I need to build this treehouse. What do we do in the good old U.S. of A? Go to your neighbor. Let me go to my neighbor. Hey, you know what? I realized I might need a footer to support this, and I don't have a shovel. Do you have a shovel? Sure, neighbor. Here's a shovel. In fact, I'm going to come over and help you dig that hole because I've seen your five-year-old building that treehouse, and you need some help. I need a post hole digger. I don't have a post hole digger in my garage. Then I go to my neighbor and I get the post hole digger and I share. And then guess what? When he's building his project, he's going to come into my garage. He's going to ask me for, for a piece of something, a tool that I have so that there can be a co-creative exchange of energy. Your tool, my tool. We are greater as a nation, greater as a church when we share our tools. Nelson Mandela knew this. If we are to maintain freedom, this is what he said. To be free is not merely to cast off one's chains. That's just the beginning of freedom. But to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. Passing it on is a necessary tool to the freedom that I get to enjoy. The spiritual principles. We are so afraid as a unity movement to share the life-changing spiritual principles that have made our lives what they are today. Somebody asked you, what church do you go to? <laughs> oh, they might not like it. I'm telling you, it is an obligation of the freedom that you enjoy as having implemented the spiritual principles that are in your life to share it with everybody. And when you don't share it, when you don't share it, you are diminishing the God doing business as you. You are diminishing the power and the presence, and, and you're actually saying that that person is so beneath you that they couldn't possibly handle the truth that you have discovered. I'm saying whose judgment is in the way there? Not theirs. Yours. We are building a treehouse together, a treehouse of heaven on earth, and this looks like the treehouse. Different opinions on one side of this room to the other. We're building a treehouse of a nation. Different opinions on one side or the other. But I bet we can find agreement if we take time to look deeply enough. We have sitting in this room black, white, brown people. Different cultures, different belief systems, but we're proving something. We also have independents, Democrats, Republicans in this room. If we can't prove it here, why bother coming? We also have Christians here, Jews, Muslims atheists, and we somehow are able to prove it, at least when we're playing nice. I'm saying it's playing nice, making it down to the Holy Grounds Cafe when you sit at a table. 
Is the ego in charge of the hammer when you're sitting down at the table in holy grounds or in the parking lot and somebody says, who did you vote for? If who did you vote for leads to a fight and an argument, you are taking the freedom that you get to enjoy and you're saying, I don't want it. And a treehouse never gets built, plain and simple. Educate yourself. Sacrifice what needs to be let go of. Live with uncertainty. Let yourself be wise and responsible about the power that has been placed in your hands to create not only the life that you enjoy, but the life that we enjoy. And then share it, plugged into something greater than your human need to be right, plugged into something greater than your human need to win. When that happens, we all win. We're going to go into meditation now. I've said some things. You know, a mentor told me at one point that if I haven't ticked somebody off on any given Sunday, I'm not doing my job. I have one job for you, and that is to cause you to think. And if you don't like what I said, good, let's talk about it. Somebody did not like what I said last week, and I, I, I extended a hand and said, let's talk about it, because we're then proving the freedom that we enjoy. I'm challenging you that if you didn't like what I had to say today, call me. And let's sit down as friends and family and talk about it. That allows freedom to live. And if you did like what I had to say, please tell me. Because that also celebrates the freedom that we get to enjoy in the sharing.